The world has been reshaped by the sudden appearance of these portals, known as gates, which connect Earth to dungeons filled with monsters. Individuals who possess special abilities to fight these monsters are called hunters. They are ranked from E to S, with E being the weakest and S the strongest. The Hunters Guilds manage these individuals, organizing raids to clear the dungeons and prevent monsters from invading the human world. Sung Jin Wu is an E-rank hunter, popularly known as the weakest of all. Despite his low rank, he continues to participate in raids out of necessity to pay for his mother's medical bills and support his younger sister's education. Jin Wu is often mocked by his fellow hunters due to his frailty and frequent injuries. Due to his weakness, he considered it so embarrassing to call himself a hunter. Sung Jin Wu is always getting hurt and has had many near-death experiences, but he could not quit not that he liked the hunter's job, but he just had to continue with it because he believed he had no other special talent to get another job than to be a hunter despite receiving a little amount of shares from the guild which could barely settle his mother medical bills. The story continues, Back greets Kim and Kim thinks he has quit hunting because he doesn't like the hunter's job. Surprisingly to him, he saw Back again. Back explained his reason for coming back was for the safety and well-being of his wife, who is currently pregnant with their second son. Back was worried that he might fall behind because of his bad skills, and it even got worse when he took a break from the hunter's work. Kim diverted their discussion by explaining who Sung Jin Wu was to Ba. Miss Ju He attend the raid also. She noticed Jin Wu's facial injury. Then she approached him to find out how Jin Wu got the injury. Jin Wu could not hesitate. He told Ju He that he got it from a hunt, even though he being taken to the hospital to get it treated. Furthermore, Sung Jin Wu explained to Miss Ju He how they went to an E rank dungeon in which he was the only one that was hurt out of all of them, so embarrassing. He further explained that the rest were all higher ranked, and because of that, a healer hunter's role in the raid was of no need. Miss Ju He was somehow infuriated because she thought they deliberately did not come with a healer just because they were all higher ranked hunters and they felt they would be safe no matter what. To calm her nerves, Sung Jin Wu told her that they were not to be blamed. He accepted the fact that his weakness had landed him a lot of injuries, and that had caused the present one. Jin Wu embraces Ju He about the present raid they are about to go on, seeing that others are prepared. The hunters are all set to the gates while Mr. Song informs them about his idea to be the party leader for the raid, and they all agree to it. They set off to enter the dungeon as Mr. Song told Jin Wu to stay safe and try not to lose his guard for that day's hunt. As the hunters enter the dungeon, they notice that the dungeon is a D-rank dungeon. This brings them into a state of worry because of Jin Wu's continual injuries in previous hunts they've gone for, even to the lowest ranked dungeons. Miss Ju He then turns to Jin Wu to discuss his decision of being a hunter. Ju He only shows how much she cares for Jin Wu. As the raid was about to end, they all noticed the presence of Mr. Bak whom they thought he would have died during the raid. Then he confidently told them that the raid was just a piece of cake for him. Miss Ju He showed her concern once more. She asked Jin Wu his reason for choosing hunting as his life career. Jin Wu restricted himself from saying his actual reasons, so he had to lie that hunting saves him from boredom. Ju He then told him that what he thought could save him from boredom could lead him to his afterlife. Mr. Song shows the hunters a magical core they got from a C-rank monster after killing it. He told them the worth of that magical core and its cost. Jin Wu being an E-rank hunter won't be able to handle C-rank monsters. Jin Wu wonders that after all his injuries, fights, struggles, and everything he still earns a single E-rank magical core. He was so sad that after putting his life at risk, he still earns little. They noticed another entrance in which they believed the boss of the monsters was still alive in there because the gates only closed after the dungeon boss had been killed. The party leader who happens to be Mr. Song is supposed to inform the guild about the entrance and then await orders before going in, but they have second thoughts, which is to go in quickly before the other set of hunters gets there. 
just because they do not want their profit from the raid to dwindle. Mr. Song suggests they all enter the dungeon together, but some hunters among them hesitate from entering. So they decide to vote to conclude what their decision will be. Having 17 hunters present, eight of them voted to go inside the other found dungeon while eight voted negative. Now the final decision of the vote is based on one left person, Jin Wu. Jin Wu had extensive thought before making his vote count. Firstly, he needed to send his sister to college and secondly, he needed money to take care of his mother and her hospital bills. With this, he made his choice by joining the other eight that are willing and eager to explore the other dungeon. Jin Wu's vote was actually against Ju He. He could not help but apologize to her for making her go into the dungeon. Ju He accepts the apology and pretends as if all is well with her. But actually, she is not happy taking steps further into that dungeon. It's so obvious. Jin Wu thought about how Ju He had been helpful to him. She was the cause why Jin Wu was still alive, and ultimately, she was a B-rank healer. After some further discussions between Ju He and Jin Wu, they got to the boss room designed with a mighty door that left them in shock, knowing that they had never seen that type of door. Some felt it was no good idea to go in, but as for Mr. Song, he couldn't walk that whole distant mile and still go home empty-handed. He had to announce to them that they are free to go, that is to anyone who was not yet convinced of going in. His announcement geared up their trust in him, inasmuch they followed him from the start. Then they need to follow him till the end. Mr. Song opened the door to the dungeon. The door thus opened easily without stress. They all went in with Mr. Song leading the way. Entering the dungeon, they were all surprised to see that the light in the dungeon was put on all on its own. Mr. Song then told everyone to spread out and split up in order to search the whole room. To them, it seems no one has been there for a very long time, and to the statues they are kind of weird, to their notice, the statues also have some instruments in their hands. The statues made Jin Wu feel scared since they are too many of them in the room. The feeling even made him think that Salmon was staring at them. The huge one, probably it's the boss, Jin Wu thought so because it was the big one among them all. After some minutes of walking and searching through the room, they found nothing that struck the resemblance of a monster. But at that very moment, one of the hunters found something interesting, a magic seal. Afterward, they came across a written rock in runic text. Mr. Song was summoned. He then started reading the text. What was written on the rock was the Carthenon Temple's commandments. This means that the room they found themselves in is called the Carthenon Temple, and it has some laws that guide its residents. Mr. Song read out the rules to the hearings of other hunters, while Ju He called the attention Jin Wu to also witness a fiery thing that she just witnessed. She saw that the huge statue moved its eyeball, but Jin Wu didn't attention. After the whole commandment, the last part states that anyone who does not abide by the commandment will not leave the temple alive. That prompts the shutness of the door. One of them decided to leave. He was not ready for any more drama. He moved towards the door to open it, but the statue guiding the temple's door drew out his sword and cut him. He surely didn't leave that place alive. Ju He guessed right by saying the monsters move their body, and now they all have to fight back. Jin Wu a bit worried, knew that the rank of the person that just died was a D-rank hunter. Mr. Song's countenance showed that he is frightened. Immediately, Jin Wu thought about all his near-death experiences which he had from the beginning of his journey as a hunter. Starting from how he accidentally broke away from his party in his first raid and got lost to how hit by an E-rank monster in the back and was hospitalized for some weeks straight to how he almost starved to death after being trapped in a dungeon. As for Jin Wu, he has been putting his life on the line even to the lowest rank dungeon. Other hunters had something to trade for a better weapon, like their magical core, to defeat stronger monsters and earn more treasures, but he can't do that, he is always unequipped. Jin Wu is aware that buying a poor sword would only result in it being destroyed and the advantage he has is to raid with hunters to get his wounds healed at a go given that it's not extremely serious. Often, other hunters in his visibility mock him for coming out of a mere E-rank dungeon injured. 
They also feel pity for the healer that raids alongside him because they will have to put in extra work. He was tagged the world's weakest hunter, but Jin Wu ignored all their sneering remarks and continued on his way, inefficiently taking up some job that could result in his death. All that now makes some sense, definitely he's been growing for a more serious raid, like that day. Jin Wu notices some sort of lightning from the huge statue eyeballs. He screams out instructing other hunters in the temple to beware of what's coming. Mr. Song cares for the whole team members, after the tragedy he stood up to embrace others and ask for their well-being. While at that, Jin Wu explained to Mr. Song that Ju He can only handle basic raid as a B-rank healer. But as for what they just experienced, it's nothing similar to basic. Mr. Song realizes that those who listen to the yelling Jin Wu are the ones speared by the chaos. Now, Mr. Song lost his arm to the tragedy of the temple. Jin Wu saw this and showed some concern. He was asked to stop the bleeding, which he did by tying a white cloth around the injured surface. While doing that, Mr. Song asked him the rank of the statue. He replied with no definite answer because he had never been to a raid higher than a D rank. Mr. Song tried to make his guess about a rank or S rank monsters, the highest monster rankings. Jin Wu recollects the commandment, he goes through them, discovers the word Lord, then thinks within himself that the huge statue is the Lord the commandment is referring to. The story rewinds to ten years ago, a history of how the gates emerged, whereby the whole world experienced many bizarre events. Examples of people who suffered from this bizarre experience were the hunters basically because they were the ones hunting down the monsters. Jin Wu explained how he became a hunter, though his strength was only enough for a B-rank bazaar. Hun power to cross the gate and to destroy monsters. However, sometimes beyond the gates, there might be some ominous despairing insane monsters that sprang out of nowhere. Jin Wu asked Mr. Song if he would be fine with his arm bleeding non-stop. Mr. Song was totally confused. Mr. Song stated that he only brought three healers alongside with them into the dungeon because he thought everything will end in a jiffy. But now, one of the healers has been killed brutally, and the two others, trembling in fear and shock. Mr. Song could not think of anything else other than to escape the temple. He advised the other hunters to do so, but Jin Wu knew that escaping wouldn't be an easy task. They agreed with Mr. Song on the idea of escaping the temple. Jin Wu knew that the only way out for them was to pass through the guard statue. If they try to escape attacks from the huge statue, the guard statue won't allow them out. That instant, one of them furiously summoned courage, and he said, I can't die here. Mr. Song tried to stop him with his voice, but he didn't yield. He stubbornly trusted his speed, but could not make it. With the lightning from the eyeball of the huge statue, his body shattered into pieces with no traces of it. It was a loss to the team. Mr. Song was pained while Jin Wu asked why the monsters didn't just kill them all at once. He notices that the monsters' actions depend on what they do, meaning they have a pattern in attacking strangers. He recollects back to the rules, and then asks Mr. Song what the first rule states. The first rule was to worship the Lord, the huge statue. Instantly, he stood up to his feet and faced the statue. He realized that the monster didn't attack those who moved. That instance, Jin Wu understood the meaning of the first rule, yell at everyone to bow down. The huge statue only attacks when they move at a certain height. Jin Wu implement understanding at that scene. Mr. Song notices his wisdom. He had to question him to know if he figured out something unique. Jin Wu explained the meaning of first rule, and it turns out to be life-saving. Both Mr. Song and the other hunters had no choice than to bow down. Then the rage within the huge statue depreciate. The statue changed its expression meaning that their worship is acceptable, but they can't just be on their kneel all day. One of the hunters tries standing up to know if the attack has stopped, but it turns out to be something else. The statue stood up from its resting point, Mr. Song looked frightened, then asked Jin Wu if he had another plan to get them to safety. Instantly, he recollect back to the rules again, but this time, unto the next rule which is to praise the Lord. A hunter among them took up the responsibility of praising the Lord. 
thinking it was an easy task. He claims that he was once a member of the church choir. He never knew that the temple pattern differs a lot. He step up to take the lead. Others wonders if it's working, but after a while, the hunter was crushed under the foot of the statue. The whole hunters became frightened. It's now becoming scary, even more. The statue approached them and start stepping on every being it came in contact with. They have to run within the scope of the room, not in group, and they have to avoid the guards with weapon also. Jin Wu can't leave Miss Ju He behind while Mr. Bak had to think of his two kids. He's planning to be a father after that raid. While at that, he ran close to a guarding statue, calling unto others so as to get them to safety, but his life is not also safe. He was sliced into two equal part unknowingly. What a shame. The choice they all have is to praise the colossal statue. Jin Wu was the first to notice that there is a statue with an instrument. From previous attacks, he realized that the guard's attacks based on predetermined motion. With that he was able to figure out that the statues with instruments are the key to their life that moment. Immediately, he commanded everyone to run towards the statues with instruments. As they move close to the statue, each started playing. As for Jin Wu, he ran towards a statue with Miss Ju He. Unfortunately, two persons cannot be under one statue. He left Miss Ju He at that spot, then find himself a safety place. Jin Wu is really an example of man that takes responsibility. In search for a statue with instrument, he mistakenly found himself under a guarding statue, and that got him into trouble, and that took one of his leg away. Not quite good. Miss Ju He could not withstand the injury of his beloved friend, Jin Wu. She ran towards him after the whole tragedy to use her healing powers to heal Jin Wu. The hunter standing next to Mr. Song started the counting. He brought it to the remembrance of Mr. Song that 17 hunters started the raid. But as at that moment six hunters remaining, he pushed blames on Mr. Song for his rash decisions forgetting that the decision from the onset was as a result of a vote. Like an earthquake, the colossal statue brought out an altar. They all marveled and wondered the use of it. Jin Wu was able to understand that the use of the altar is to prove their faith, which is the last commandment. Based on that understanding, Mr. Kim who has previously accused Mr. Song unsheath his sword, then point it towards Mr. Song. His intention is to make Mr. Song the sacrifice. Jin Wu urge Mr. Kim to stop his arrogant actions, but he refuses. As the party leader, Mr. Song took up the responsibility and move on to the altar. After that there's a lid of fire, Jin Wu with some other hunters also find their way to the altar. For every person on the altar, it's a single lit. Jin Wu and Mr. Song started a discussion. They were worried about the period of the opening of the gate. That day marks a week since the gate has been opened. Jin Wu summoned the other hunters. After they stepped their foot on the altar, everywhere was lightened up. The gates open and the guardian statues begin to move towards their direction.